Hello, my name is Russell Preston Brown from Adobe Systems, and this, of course, is The Russell Brown Show. In this continuing series about mobile photography, I'm going to discuss one of my favorite applications here for the Apple iPhone, and it's called Slow Shutter. It gives me some really great long exposure effects. Now, you can also get long exposure effects on an Android-based phone as well. And here are some of the applications right here. Let's switch now over to Adobe Lightroom and take a look at some of the results that I get when using this particular application. I'll also discuss some of my favorite preferences I set for working with this application on the Apple iPhone. So here we are in Adobe Lightroom Mobile, and I'm going to take a look at some of the images that I've taken with this application. Here you can see I can get a motion blur here to the blades of this windmill. In this next photo, you can see that I'm calming the waters. You can also notice here in the upper left-hand corner that I've photographed this for 9.2 seconds using this application. I'm on a small tripod sitting here on the deck, and then in the 9.2 seconds, it smooths out the water really nicely and it blurs the clouds. Here's a great example. You can go to a very common location here, like the Marin Headlands just above the Golden Gate Bridge, where thousands of people have taken this photograph, but you can give your images a whole new look just by a little bit of a long exposure. Here's another example where you can calm the waters on Lake Tahoe to give this really nice reflection and also clearly see the rocks below the surface of the water. Again, here on Lake Tahoe, I get that same really nice calming of the waters, even if the wind is blowing extremely hard, which it was in this case. So my clouds are moving, my water is calm, and as you can see, I shot this for 24 seconds. In the upper left-hand corner, you can see that figure right there. Within this application, you have several different settings for the different types of long exposure. As you can see here, you can get different effects. One of the techniques I really like is called the light trail mode, as you see here. If something in the photograph is not moving, like this gentleman with the stroller, it really adds to the effect of your image. Then finally, this photograph, where I'm using the trail setting here for a photograph of the Golden Gate Bridge, where I can now see the flight path of birds flying around the area. Let's switch back over to the slow shutter application and look at some of the settings I use to achieve these results. Okay, here we are inside of the slow shutter application. Here in the upper right hand corner, I'm tapping on this icon right here because there are a few settings I'd like to point out. The first one here is under picture resolution. I'm currently working here on an iPad Pro and the picture resolution can only be set to 8 megapixels. On my iPhone, I can set it to 12 megapixels. Be sure and set this at the highest resolution for your best results. I also want to point out under picture file format right down here that I shoot in the JPEG format. This is just a recommendation and you can run some tests of your own but I believe that the JPEG format is best for using this application. That's it for the settings that I use right here. I'm going to leave everything else in the default settings. Let's select Done and go right down here, over here to this gear icon to go into my Capture Mode settings. The first one we want to take a look at is Motion Blur right here. You can see this image on the screen right now where I've used the Motion Blur setting. I adjusted the strength, in this case, all the way over to maximum. I like that setting, especially in this carousel image. I also set the shutter speed at bulb. I like to photograph scenes like this in the bulb mode so that I can watch the development of the image. Taking the exposure and then watching the image develop can give you really interesting results. Of course, you can set the shutter speed to any value you want, but I find the most creative things happen when you set it to the bulb mode and then watch your image develop and then stop it at the point in which it looks good. Let's check out this next mode called the light trail right here. This image 
was then shot in the light trail mode and you can clearly see the difference. Let me switch back there again. Here's motion blur and here's light trail. So it will leave a bright trail within your image. And then finally, low light right here. You can see in the low light mode, it then enhances the image and brings out detail in the shadows. It may add a bit more noise, but I really like the bright colors that form in this setting. Finally, check this out. This image was taken in the daytime near the Golden Gate Bridge, and I set the light sensitivity all the way up to full. I set the shutter speed at bulb, and I set the value to light trail, as you see here. And this is how I achieve the results where you can see the flight path of the birds. You can keep this running as long as you want to then capture more birds within a shot. There you have it. These are some of the preferences and settings that I work with here on this iPhone application for capturing long exposure. This is a great application and you should give it a try. Follow along in my next tutorial where I'll discuss how I photographed the Golden Gate Bridge in this shot and then adjusted the image in Adobe Lightroom Mobile to give it this effect.